Let's look at pension schemes and, of course, the savings here in South Africa. We saw Finance Minister Praveen Gordon uh, mm. trying to create more incentives for people to save. Do you mm. think he's being overly optimistic or do you think he's gotten it right? Uh, yes. I think uh, it's, it's the former. I think he is being somewhat overly optimistic. I mean, they have increased, for someone under 65, they have increased the interest income exemption limit from 21,000 mm. to just above 22,000. And for those 65 over, um, it's gone from 30 to 32. I don't think this is enough. Um, I think, you know, we talked um, about, about the, the this introduction of a national health um, scheme and, and social insurance, etc. Um, that's going to mainly, let's be honest, cater for the less well off. Um, at retirement. Um, but currently, I, I don't believe the, the, the majority of taxpayers are incentivized sufficiently um, to, to save until perhaps it, it's too late. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and maybe a pension time bomb then ticks away. For example, if I can just give you an example. Um, currently, if, if, if you're in a, in, a, in a company pension scheme, you can, up to, it's, uh, you can contribute up to 7.5% of, of your, your retirement funding employment income and obtain tax relief on that. But if you contribute more, the excess cannot be carried forward. Take someone who's in non-pensionable em employment and it's in respect of non-pensionable income. Fine, they can contribute up to 15% and obtain tax relief in that year on that 15%. They can contribute more because the excess can be carried forward. I don't believe that's enough, though. I, I, the, the, the minister has highlighted that um, the retirement funding, uh, whole retirement funding regime in this country is being looked at and we welcome that. Um, I would hope that uh, when the final package is, 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 is unveiled um, that he does take into, into consideration the tax reliefs currently available. Mm -hmm. One idea perhaps is, and maybe for him to be somewhat imaginative, is, is to look at increasing the percentage that maybe qualifies for tax relief and do it perhaps on an age basis. So perhaps when someone gets closer to retirement, they can, they can avail of higher tax relief. Only looking at pension schemes and the incentives to save and, and go for a pension as well here in South Africa, we're obviously basing it against other countries, and this is why we say that the system here in South Africa needs to be overhauled. Um, how can we make the current environment here in South Africa work for us, even though it's not to the great level that we've been seeing globally? Yes. I agree with James that the, that the efforts to incentivize people to save is, is, is not enough. If we look at, uh, at, at the economic figures, very few people are able to retire uh, self-sufficient. It's very, 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 very small percentage. So the, the, that becomes a burden to the state. It becomes a burden on society. And uh, greater any effort to, to increase the levels of savings, the level of, of planning for retirement is, is going to be welcome. If we look at, uh, at what has happened recently, the the, the, a couple of positive things is that the taxation of retirement uh, lump sums and withdrawal lump sums, mm. that, that very complicated formula has mm. fallen away. And uh, we have, for example, on retirement, um, 300,000 rand exempt, and the next 300,000 taxed at 18%, the next 300,000 taxed at 27%, and the next 300,000 taxed at a higher rate than that. So that has been welcome. Uh, but in, in far as for insofar as, as incentivizing people to save more, the increase in the interest exemption is a nothing. Mm, it's not enough. It's really nice. Well, do you agree with that? And what are you advising yes. clients right now with pension schemes and savings? I mean, what's the best option? Well, there is no best option. I think if you're working for a company where you've got a pension or provident fund already in place, you don't really have the choice. The company has chosen that on your behalf. So you need to be able to use your other tax-free amounts that you can possibly put away to increase your savings. Now, very often, when it comes down to a pension or provident fund, only 80%, for example, of the income is taken into account for that pensionable amount, which forms your retirement funding income. Mm -hmm. Now, if people have to look at their non-retirement funding income, that is the amount that is not included into pensional provident fund calculations, as well as bonuses and that type of thing, people could be putting another 15% away, tax-free, over an, well, not tax-free, but as a tax deduction, over and above that. So people need to use the various options. I agree with you 100% where we in a situation that being, so being um, in South Africa, uh, the 15% is probably not enough for, for South Africans to be able to save um, going forward. Mm. But I feel that what needs to really happen is that people have to use other vehicles as well. I very often do not advise people to go 
a massive amount into her time into annuities that is not tax deductible. What the best case scenario is to use your portion that is tax deductible and then be in a position where you're using other vehicles such as unit trusts or endowment plans mm -hmm. to subsidize your retirement planning. We're almost out of time. Any last comments? Uh, Ernie, I know you wanted to touch on dispute resolutions and vol voluntary disclosures. I think the taxpayers that, that uh, aren't t uh, tax compliant should use this voluntary disclosure opportunity mm -hmm. to come clean. Mm -hmm. SARS are going to become very tough in this current year simply because they're looking for money and uh, imp uh, taxpayers should, uh, should really concentrate on improving their, their, their administration because the penalties and interests uh, on, on non-compliance is getting higher and higher. Mm. And, James, and any closing comments? I think, I think I would just to add to, I, I agree with Ernie on this point, and I, just to add to it, um, whilst the actual disclosure program only takes effect um, from 1 November, um, I think taxpayers need to understand that they're going to need to prepare for this. And I think SARS are quite deliberate in pushing out the actual commencement date so that, that, that taxpayers could get started. But they, they need to look at it now. Right, before we go, it's time for a quick look at our weekly viewers' tips. This week, of course, uh, our, our tips relate to Budget 2010. Let's take a look at the first one, and Relin will be taking us through them. In fact, the first one, travel allowances, which we've actually discussed. Give us a quick preview on that. Well, the tip really is to just keep a logbook. Mm -hmm. If you are t uh, deducting a travel allowance, keep a logbook. Make sure that you are deducting it. Right, next one is employee benefits, a fringe benefit tax payable. That's really where the tax that we've already discussed in terms of unapproved benefits, conforming key man policies, those types of things. There is a huge amount of tax that's going to be coming, well, clamping down on that and obviously employees need to be aware that there is going to be a fringe benefit tax on these benefits. And can I just simply uh, add yes, there that employers, add. It equally employers need to ensure that they're actually yes. deducting the tax mm -hmm. because that's why the penalties will kick in. And of course you've got to find out which uh, one of your policies is tax deductible and that's the last tip, Raylan? Yes. Um, obviously people don't always realise that their retirement annuities, income protection plans, etc. are actually tax deductible. Very often people are contributing to these plans and actually don't claim their tax deduction. So the idea is use any deduction that you can get and maximise your retirement savings.